guys welcome back to the channel joffy noodle legs here today with another noodle film review today we're looking at um if i can find it you've got it here um 1972 film death line otherwise known as raw meat now this is a british cannibal movie uh this was before the italian sort of cannibal movies uh, uh sort of um took off or anything this was way before this 1972 um the little premise of the story is basically in the 1800s when they were building the railways the, the underground um there were a lot of collapses and stuff like that obviously because it's underground and lots of lots of people died in the making of the underground anyway this is sort of like base where there's been like a big collapse and the companies that are building it have run out of money and can't afford to sort of like dig the people out so they've left them in there to die kind of thing horrendous right but i guess this sort of thing happened back in the 1800s um but this group of people found like a pocket where they were in um and could live and obviously getting some sort of oxygen through and so they lived there and obviously they got hungry and they started to feed off one another and sort of turn into cannibals and then it got down to just two left after like i don't know how many years because this is now in the 1970s there's only two left and th i think they've been going up out of the underground sort of now and again picking the odd person out you know for dinner so that's the sort of like premise of the story so i'll give you a little synopsis now the film starts off in a nine in an old 1970s view of russell square So we see our businessman in the underground there and he's uh, walking there on, on the actual platform and he approaches a woman he believes to be a, a, a lady of the night, should I say. So she she uh, gives him what for if you like and takes his money and runs off. It turns out he's some he's a well off guy. He's like got an OBE or something. Anyway, he he sort of walks around the station a bit more, and then he sees something approaching him. So that's quite cool seeing um, a little bit of the 1970s underground. Oh, how things haven't changed as much, really. I, I do miss those at that time of, the, of uh, London. I think the 70s and 80s, London was the place to be. It was amazing. I started going to gigs around that sort of time. and uh, Amazing, amazing. So it was great to see that. Um, anyway, our couple get off the underground there at Russell Square and they find the... Uh, the bloke that looks like he's been attacked. Alex, help him. Leave him alone, he's a drunk. Trisha, what the hell are you 
what do you think you're doing? Come on. You might be a diabetic. See if there's a card in his wallet. This card entitles James Mansford, OBE, to entry in one free drink at any of the hundred clubs listed on the back. No diabetic, Patricia, but drunk, but a title thing. So the female's quite concerned about him. She thinks he's unconscious, something wrong with him, or he's been hurt. The guy thinks he's just a drunk, and he's really quite of like obnoxious about it. And he says, like, "Oh, this happens all the time in New York." She goes, "Well, this isn't New York." In New York, you walk over these We're guys. We're not in New York. All right, you stay with me. I'm going upstairs to get help. No, I'll come. Please tell him, or I will. I don't want to get involved, Patricia. I might be dying. Tell him. Right. Excuse me. There's a man collapsed down on the platform. Can you call an ambulance? Please hurry. He's unconscious. Well, uh, I couldn't use the phone, sir. I mean, to do that, I'd have to stop the lift, you see. There's a point outside, you see, and I'd better get out and plug it in there. Then you can use the phone. I think on the old, it's best to wait till we get up there. Then we can all go down again. I think it's the only thing to do under the circumstances, quite honestly. Anyway, she persuades him that they need to go and report it. So they go up to uh, the underground there and they sort of report it to the guy there. Um, I recognise him from some stuff, but I can't remember. Anyway, he they then sort of flag down a policeman who's walking past the station and he comes down to uh, have a look at this uh, this body or this guy laying unconscious. I'm sure he's just a drunk sleeping at all. That's alright, sir. It's always best to make sure. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. Suppose so. So it's disappeared and um they don't know what's happened anyway. The police officer goes and makes a sort of report about it, and we catch up with our pair in bed at home, and she's still worried about him, a complete stranger. Had noticed. I keep thinking about him. Do you think he's all right? Of course he's all right. It's horrible. We then cut to the next day at the police station, and here we see the legend that is Donald Pleasance. What about Donald's been up to during the night? Nothing much. Same in ourselves up for a rainy day. Well, that's what I thought. Usual crop of petty larceny. Nothing else. Attempted smash and grab in Bond Street. Actually, drive a front of the passenger. Provocation. Right. Marshal! Coming, sir. Go on, Rogers. Uh, there's a report of a funny incident at Russell Square tube station. Yes, sir? Tea! Oh, sorry, sir. I had to get some more tea bags. Tea bags? You've been using tea bags? Uh, they're standard issue, sir. Ah, rather than blaming the Indians. But do you still want some, sir? Yes, of course I want some. Very good, sir. Yes. Donald Presence is absolutely superb. And, um,. We we speak to his uh, we see his um, colleague tell him about the report of the the American guy and the girl seeing this guy at Russell Square uh, last night. Two students, an American Alex Campbell and a girl Patricia Wilson, called a tungsten and reported a man unconscious on the platform. When they got down there, the man had gone, probably fainted. Come round and got the next train. Could be, sir. The last train had gone. They came in on it. And they said the man was dying. Tea bags. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Fancy that. Dying. So they said, sir. They identified the man as well. James Manfred, OBE. James Manfred? Uh, that rings a bell. He's some big shit. A shot. <laughs> a defense or a home office. 
Um, no, it doesn't make sense. What would a geezer like Manfred be doing on public transport? So they discover this is guy is quite an important guy, and um, um, Donald Pleasance does a hilarious sort of phone call, putting on a fake sort of voice to uh, uh, the office of him, speaking to his secretary. Manfred took long enough, didn't it? What do you want? Well, James and Manfred did. What? There we are, his secretary. On. <laughs> yes. <laughs> James never stops going on about you. What? When do you expect me back? Oh, missed the morning meeting with the minister, did we? Naughty. Naughty boy. That doesn't sound like James at all. What? So, after this, we get quite a bit of sort of jibber jabber going on. There's quite hilarious bits with Donald Pleasance going on about his cups of tea and stuff. Anyway, he sends his colleague out to the, the American young lad's flat to sort of like get him to come to the station so they can question him. <laughs> Aren't you being Mr. Alex Campbell, sir? Yes, I am. Uh, Detective Sergeant Rogers. I wonder if you'd mind coming along to the station for a few moments. What station? What for? An incident at Russell Square, the Hoban Police Station. Oh, you mean last night? The drunk? Yes, the drunk, sir. What was Patricia Wilson be about just now? She had an early lecture. Mm. Which she does normally, bizarrely, from time to time. That's what everyone finds out. Why do I have to go all the way down to the station? Can't you just ask me what you need to know here? Well, myself, I wouldn't mind. So it'd save me a trick, too. But the inspector would appreciate it. <sighs> uh, we then cut to them at the station. I'll arrest somebody. Well, Mr. Campbell, quite an adventure you had last night. Adventure? Just not everyone who finds an unconscious man on the platform of underground station. In New York, Inspector, we call it a holiday when you don't. <laughs> so I heard. <laughs> That we then cut to the back to the flat where the girl and the American guy they start arguing about it. I think she's tempting to leave him, she's got the ump because um because he wanted to leave the guy behind and now the guy's missing and she feels a bit responsible. Um so she's got really upset with him she wants to leave. And then we cut back to the police station with Donald Pleasance and um the another guy, the guy who <laughs> there is Richard from um um, keeping up appearances, and he's telling them history a little bit about of the underground and what's you know what used to happen there. We're talking to the police. Suddenly, we're suspects. Alex, it was our duty. That's Albert. Yeah, well, that wasn't the name of the station. I used to be one at British Museum, but that closed down when London Transport bought up a small company. Uh, were they connected, um, Holborn and British Museum? Wouldn't be surprised. Well, it's like a rabbit hole down there. Uh, there we are, museum. Right between them. Now, the old city and South London company were tunneling down there in um, 1892 when a whole section of the roof collapsed, burying a number of men. Eight of them had four women. Women? Yes, they used to work alongside the men in those days. Men dug and the women uh, hauled the dirt up to the surface, just like in the coal mine. Get on with it, Richardson. Well, interestingly enough, the women, there was quite a scandal attached to it because the company involved went bankrupt and they couldn't afford to dig the bodies out. So they abandoned them and uh, abandoned the whole line. There were some old tunnels who believed there were air pockets down there and that they couldn't survive for some time. The company refused to listen. Well, how could they survive without food? Well, plenty of water and food, because I should imagine there was each one dying, the others eating. So, like I told you about um, at the beginning of the video, it wasn't unknown for parts of the railway to collapse while they were building it and people just dying. But there was a group of these people that were still alive in there and ended up turning into sort of cannibals. And so um, that's sort of like what would they think has happened, that the guys being bodies gone missing with the cannibals. We then cut to uh, 
a gruesome scene in the underground. So there we see the remains of an arm and then we see the rest of the room and the guy that the the, the businessman that's gone missing we see him in there um, and there's loads of other sort of bodies in there and sort of like all sort of like half kind of eating bits of face missing and stuff like that. it's quite gory uh, and then we meet our cannibals and that's all I'm going to tell you I'm not going to tell you anymore are they going to discover these cannibals um, Donald, is Donald Pleasant's going to get a proper cup of tea? Um, is what what's going to happen with the, this American guy and the girl? Are they, they seem to get more involved with this, or are they just going to sort of like um, go their way, or they're going to be more involved with the story? Um, are they going to discover this area, obviously, where this cannibal's living, and sort of like? Um, pulling the odd person now and again off the street to eat. And what's this cannibals doing? How many is there? You need to watch it and find out. What do I think of the movie? It was amazing. Absolutely amazing film. I, I, I was absolutely glued to it. Not just because of the nostalgic part of London, because I love London anyway. And because of the 70s and 80s of London, I think they're amazing. But it was a really gripping story. And I kind of felt sorry a little bit for the uh, cannibals a little bit. Because obviously they're in a situation it's not their fault. And they know nothing else about it. But um, yeah, it's really, really cool. The story premise of this is really, really good. And it's just, it, it just sort of like wowed me when I, when I watched, when it, when it ended, I went, wow. There was some bits in there and I thought, other programs have stolen that. Even Game of Thrones, because I don't know if you've ever watched Game of Thrones, but there was a a a, a guy in there called uh, Hold Hold Door, and he kept saying Hold the door. Well, this cannibal down there keeps saying Mind the door, and that's all he says. He can't say nothing else but Mind the door. So I'm wondering if they've stole that from this. Who knows? But um, yeah, the things like that. There's there's so many cool things about this film. That's absolutely amazing. It, it was like a underground sort of Texas Chainsaw Massacre sort of thing, really. Um, it was just really strange. I've not seen any film like it. It stands out completely on its own. Um, absolutely amazing. It's got Donald Pleasance, and it also stars Christopher Lee. Now, Christopher Lee's not in it for very long. He's only in it for about one scene about a minute and a half and he has a conversation with Donald Pleasance but it's worth buying the movie for that scene alone the the the, the conversation between them was fantastic it was so cool and Donald Pleasance is absolutely brilliant so that leads me to the pluses of the film it looks incredible for its age it's got some great grain in it it looks amazing it really does feel like the 1970s and it's brilliant Donald Pleasance steals the show this is one of the best films I've ever seen him in. I mean, I loved him in Halloween. I loved him in New uh, Escape from New York. I loved him in The Great Escape. Um, and all these other sort of great films that he's been in, Alone in the Dark. But this is my favourite film of him in it. He's, he's almost comical in it. He brings a, like a light sort of a comical part to the film. Because the film's quite grisly and quite dark and um, sort of depressing in a way, if you like. Um, the other plus is the gore is brilliant. It's got some good gore in it. It's not over gory, but for the 1972, it's really quite gory. Um, it's got some good scenes of sort of like um, the cannibal area. Uh, and you see the dead cannibals that have been living there for a long time. This guy's been taking care of them in a separate room, their bodies. It's fantastic. It's full of atmosphere. Absolutely brilliant. It's really sort of, you know, sort of chill to the bone sort of uh, horror. And I loved it. It was amazing. The minuses of the film 
I suppose um, the only minus I can think of is probably the lack of cannibals and maybe could have been a bit more, oh, here we go, violent. <laughs> there we go. Uh, there is some violence in there, but I, I would like to see it a bit more. But yeah, it was amazing. I'm going to score the film now an amazing watch and I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. If you've never seen Deathline, if you've never heard of it, if you see it cheap, pick it up and buy it. It's fantastic. Donald Pleasance is amazing in it. Christopher Lee's in it. It's a great British horror. No one ever talks about it. And it's amazing. And for some bizarre reason, it was originally called Raw Meat. But um, I quite like Deathline. I think that's a better name for it. Because obviously, the underground lines, you've got Piccadilly Line and everything else. you know. So I quite like the name of that title. I think it's quite clever. Deathline, 9 out of 10. Any of you guys seen it? If you have, let me know down below what you thought of it. I thought it was great. And it was, and to see Donald Pleasance in a... I don't know. it. He must have loved playing this role because you could see him enjoying it. And he's so, so funny. He's got some amazing lines in this film. Absolutely fantastic. He makes the film. So if you're a fan of... Donald Pleasance and you don't own this film buy it it's one of his greatest films it's amazing really cool film guys pick it up if you can see it about really loved it please check out some uh, horror channels before my next reviews check out Horror Hands the Horror Geek Man Review Film RS Designs I am Ice Lord Pizzlewell and Sarah of Horror check all those channels out for me guys till next time and I want a special shout out, shout out to my lad Hope you're doing well, mate. Um, look after yourselves. Look after one another. And I really hope I'll see you all soon.